Greetings, fellow traveler. Today, I want to remind you to take inventory in who you believe yourself to be. Sit with yourself. Visit your world within. And unapolog unapologetically, just be who you are. Observe the things that you think. Observe the actions that you take. Observe how you speak to yourself. There are many other ways to connect with yourself in this way, but those are just a few examples. Really take inventory of what you contribute to your life experience, to your journey, to this thing we call reality. Because sometimes instantly, and other times, it'll take a while, you'll begin to reveal aspects of yourself that either you didn't want to confront or that you simply chose to ignore. Where the good, bad, or indifferent, allowing yourself the grace to be aware without judgment. You receive a certain element of acceptance. You also receive an empowering feeling of knowing what you can change and how it will serve you. It's not about meeting the standards of anything outside of you. It's about understanding the internal standards that you operate from. And a majority of the time, you will find something that you do not agree with, that you know you can change and that you're willing to change. It could be the smallest of traits or beliefs. Or it could be larger. It doesn't matter. But find time, sometime throughout your day, throughout your week, month, year, what have you. Find time to sit with yourself and see how comfortable you can be. This is not about beating yourself up. This is not about focusing on what appears to be the negative things in your life. No, it's about building a genuine rapport with oneself. It's about allowing the God within us to be heard. It's about finding peace with who we've chosen to be and acknowledging how much more we can be. I'm not talking about material. I'm not talking about going out, buying a bunch of things or increasing your level of status. If that's what you want, by all means, go get it. I don't judge you for it. I have things that I value along my journey that others may see as ridiculous or foolish. So, we all have our own business to attend to. That business is what we genuinely, well, what we usually call our journey, our life. That's our business. Tend to it accordingly. Don't worry about those outside of you. Trust me. Nah, don't even trust me. Trust yourself. Sit still and find that peaceful place for you. Sit down and acknowledge those things that you ignore in your life and understand why you ignore them. And through that understanding, you may be prompted to make choices to alleviate those issues, those seeming problems. Don't, don't let those things catch you up. Now, this is not to say this is the end all and be all. Like, no, it's simply another step. It's simply another way to disconnect from the outside world and reconnect with our inside world. 
see, there will be times where we express ourselves and don't even know why. We would do things and genuinely do not know why. It's out of habit. But when we sit down and we unpack those habits, those choices, or those involuntary decisions, we begin to realize that there are certain influences that are not hiding from us, but we're hiding from them. We don't want to acknowledge them. We don't want to be accountable for them. That's fine. Until it's not. At some point along our journey, I would like to believe that we know, understand, and embrace the idea that we are accountable for the choices that we make. If you go out into this world and you're dealing with things that are outside of you and outside of your control, and you meet or encounter maybe an unpleasant person, and they treat you a certain way or they speak to you a certain way. There is no rule or law that says that you have to reply to them or acknowledge them or treat them in kind. I'm not saying you better if you do or if you don't. It doesn't matter. It's not my choice. I'm simply reminding us that we don't have control of how others treat us, but we do have control of how we treat ourselves. And in how we treat ourselves, it is expressed in how we treat others. For sometimes you will run into individuals that would like to pull on your heartstrings, attempt to invoke some sort of emotional reaction out of you. And sometimes they don't even understand they're doing it, but it has worked for them for so long that that's all they know. That's all they choose to know. That's okay. It's not your job to feed into it. It's not your job to validate how they feel or how they think the world should acknowledge them. It's not your job. Sometimes the best thing you can do, especially in an example like that, is to not feed into it to not acknowledge the uh, the need for a certain kind of attention. Now, it doesn't mean to strictly ignore the person. Uh, sometimes there are things that we can provide to them to help. And other times it's not. I've understood that aspect for years now. But to express myself accordingly wasn't always easy. And I learned it from dealing with friends, through family, even with myself. When I attempted to correct certain certain uh, decisions by tugging on heartstrings. And something inherently within me knew that, nah, there's a better way. Yet I had dealt with so many who think differently. That, uh for a while in my younger years I thought that was the way I thought hey make somebody feel sympathetic for you foolishness foolishness speak for understanding speak for understanding and this is not with the outside world this is with self speak with self to understand why we do the things that we do why we want the responses that we want. And sometimes that requires us to put ourselves in other people's shoes. That's one example of how this can play out different ways along our journey. But honestly, it comes down to this. Know thyself. Be willing to get to know thyself. Sit down and unpack some of the things that may be troubling you. Unpack some of the things that give you excitement, a passion, the spark for life. Feed those things that feed you. But some habits, 
some thoughts that don't serve us, we got to be able to let those go. And sometimes one might confuse the two. One might say, well, this serves me because when I act out this way or when I react this way, I get the outcome that I want. And for those who believe that, that's fine because they're tending to their business. However, once you know and see that, you must act accordingly to protect yourself if you don't want to fall victim to their perspective. More importantly, sometimes, whether we know it or not, the best things that we can do along our journey is understand someone's perspective, accept that it's not our perspective, and move in a way that's different than how they would. Lead by example. They may never understand, care to understand, or comprehend why you are the way you are. Do not bound yourself to how others see you. Know and trust in that guidance within that is telling you to entertain or to not to entertain. Build that relationship of understanding with yourself so you know, okay, when I've gone down this path before, this was the outcome. And it's not about the particular people that we encounter. Sometimes it's simply understanding the traits that we encounter in ourself and in others. Because no matter how far back you look on the journey, you will see that those who you feel have betrayed you exhibit the same traits. So if that's the case, why worry about the messenger? Why worry about the people who exhibit those traits? Find a way to deal with the trait. That is the root. Find peace with dealing with the trait. And the messenger doesn't matter. I hope this provides some kind of clarity for anyone out there. I thank you for being here. Sending you nothing but love, blessings, and most importantly, I want to remind you to smile along your journey. Till next time.